Tergon has arrived and if you're not sure what it is, it's a new random world generator for 7 days to die that offers greater flexibility over the vanilla fun pimps random world generator. It will allow you to adjust the terrain style as well as biome map styles. It will also allow you to import your own height maps where the software will then place cities including their tiles and parts connecting them with roads and even bridges where appropriate. The generated worlds are particularly beautiful thanks to the heavy use of fractals and the clever implementation of environmental or height-based biomes. Hello YouTube, I'm Tom and Brad and in this video I'll walk you through installing Terragon, setting it up and creating your first map using the basic menu. I'll go into more detail on customizing your world in the next video, but for now, let's get started with Terragon. For clarity, I'm using a fresh installation of 7 Days to Die, and I have it installed in the default Steam location, with my user data folder also in its default location in the app data roaming 7 Days to Die area. The download link for Terragon is in the description, and if you follow that, you'll get a zip file containing a folder called Terragon. To launch Terragon, you'll need to find the terragon.exe file, which you can right drag to your desktop and choose Create Shortcut, so you can launch it a little easier in the future. Before you start using the software, I can highly recommend following these steps. Open the Terragon folder, find the Presets folder, and right drag it just to the side or somewhere else in that window. Then choose copy here. There's a very strong possibility that you might make some changes to settings that you find you don't like, and then you can't return the settings to default because you can't remember exactly what they were. Having a copy means you can simply replace your version with the original easily. The first time you run the software, you may get a security warning from Windows. Don't run the software as administrator, there's no need. Simply right-click on the exe file and choose to unblock. Windows 11 may look different. Once you've started the software, you need to accept the license agreement, and then there may be an update available, which you can install straight away. If World Generator 1 isn't loaded automatically, you can go up to the File menu and Load, where you'll be taken to Presets, and there is World Generator 1. Let me just click on Open. Personally, at this point, I would use the Save As option in the File menu to make my own preset that I can find easily later to continue editing. So I would just go to File, and then Save As, and then I'll rename this with TMB. And I'm using Generator 1 as the base. Now any changes that I make will just affect the preset that I've just made there and not mess with the original, although I do have a backup. So looking at what we've got on the screen here, you can see that there are four menus across the top, Basic, Advanced, Expert and Testing. We're mostly concerned with Basic today. You can see in the information window there, we've got World Generator 1 loaded and a little bit of information you can read just there. So in this window here, this is the basic setting. So there's not a lot of things to change, but it's a good place to start. Some important things to be aware of are the output directory. Just check that that is the path to where your app data roaming 7 days to die folder is. If you've got it somewhere else, you'll need to change that here. Also check your game directory is set correctly just here. You can see mine's in program files, 86 Steam, Steam Apps Common and 7 days to die. If that's incorrect, you need to find your 7 days to die folder and paste that information in there. So the next box here is the name of the world that you're about to create. Now mine's indicating that it already exists. And this is something you need to be fairly careful of because it will default to this name each time you load the preset. So please make sure to change that if you don't want to accidentally overwrite an existing world. I'm just going to change mine to TMB for this example. So the next option here is the world seed, which in this case is saying 555. You can change that to whatever you want, but I'm going to leave it at that just in case you want to try this at home as well. The world size at the minute is set to a 6K map. I'm going to drop it down for speed for the sake of the tutorial to a 4K map. It's telling me which version of the game this is set up for. There's their game directory. 
Uh, next one to features of the quality of the terrain. Now, the erosion option, it says in brackets here, it looks nice, but needs a lot of time. It does so that by default that's switched off. But if you were doing a final render of your map, you might want to turn that on to try it out. I'm going to leave it deselected for the moment. The next option is rivers. They also take a little while to generate. And what I suggest we do for the first run through is turn off as many of the optional extras, if you like, just to save a bit of time. And this will give us the opportunity to see roughly if our map is going in the right direction before we commit to letting it do the full final render. So I'm also going to turn off the rivers just for the moment. The next option is the preview updates during river generation. Now that doesn't matter because I've turned rivers off. Diffuse biome transitions is where it creates this speckling effect where two biomes meet, which gives you a really nice smooth transition between the two. I'm a big fan of that. You might not be. So by all means, you could turn that off. I'll go into more details about the biomes in the next video. Then we're on to the town sizes. And the first one here is saying the max town count. Now, just because it says 25, it doesn't mean you're going to get 25. You're just restricting it to the maximum amount that you would like to see. The max town size, it really doesn't matter what you put in here unless you want to restrict the size of your towns. Setting the max town size to 100 doesn't mean that all of your towns are going to be 100 tiles large. It just means that it will potentially use up to that many if there is space on the map. The minimum town size is something that a few people can fall down on I'm sure because they'll be thinking well I want big towns so I'm going to say the minimum town size has to be 20 tiles. So if you put 20 in there it won't generate towns that are any smaller than 20 which means you might actually end up with a map with nothing on it because there isn't room for a city of 20 tiles. So leave that at the smallest that you're happy with. Wilderness spawn limit is where you can just put a cap on how many wilderness POIs you want in the world. The previews have been recently updated for the maps and they are absolutely beautiful. If you want to save a copy of this really high resolution preview, you can enable this option just here. And you can export the standard version of your preview if you leave this button checked. So just to quickly refresh, it's a 4K world. Everything is set as it was by default, except I've turned off rivers and I'm just going to run it. Conveniently, there is a break in the process that allows us to check over our map. Let me pull that to one side just to see if we're happy with the direction that it's going in before proceeding, because the next stage is where it starts generating roads and that can take quite a while. So we can at this point, if we want to just stop the process and change settings more to our liking and then start again. Alternatively, if we're happy with the way things are looking, bearing in mind that this is a 4K map, then we can say to continue. That's what this is telling us here. So I'll just say OK, and I'm going to let it continue. Once completed, all of the appropriate files for your map will be placed in a folder in your user data folder with the name you specified earlier. Let's have a look at the results of what we've got here. I'll just click OK, and we'll zoom in with the mouse wheel. So here you can see the dithering effect with the transition between the forest and the desert biome. And if we zoom in, on a POI, we can even get the name of it. And if I hover the mouse over it, we actually get a little picture of what the POI looks like as well, which is very useful. Now, there are no rivers because I turned those off, so that means we won't get any bridges. If you've seen enough, don't forget to like the video before you leave. Now, this border here does look quite large, but bear in mind that this is a 4K map. So on an 8K map, this will shrink down quite a bit. This is adjustable, and that's something I'm going to be covering in the next video, as is the size and the placement of the biomes. You may not want desert as your lowest. You can change that so you can have forest as your lowest biome, changing to different biomes as it gets higher up the map. If you have made changes to the settings here and you're happy with the results and you want to come back to them later, don't forget to go into file and then say save or save as and give it a name. So now we're finished, we can load up seven days to die, choose a new game and then find this map and get started. Then in the next video, I'll show you which settings to change in the expert menu to customize the world a bit more to your liking. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been useful and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.